So what is the best fully enclosed desktop laser that you can get? I've got four of the very popular ones right behind me, and I thought it would be fun to do an old school tier list to give you my recommendations and how these kind of stack up against each other. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so these are the lasers that we are going to compare. We've got the We Create Vision, the X-Tool S1, Raleigh Lasermatic Mark II, and the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. There's also a few other machines kind of in this category. I just don't have them inside of my shop, so I'm gonna do my best to rank those as well. That's the Snapmaker Ray 40, the Glyphorge Aura, which I actually do have in my shop, the Jinmitsu L8, and the brand new IKEA K1 Pro Max, the 70 watt version. And speaking of wattage, I'm comparing the highest wattage that each of these machines offer, but some of the wattages will vary between the machines. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm actually gonna compare the dollars per watt. So just like if you're at the grocery store and there's like a pounds per dollar thing, that's the same idea. And speaking of price, this is the price as of today. So the end of February, in 2024. And on the tier list side of things, we're going to A through F with S being the highest. Don't really know where that came from. So to start off, we're actually gonna do the machines I don't have hands-on experience with, but I have kind of researched through their websites, kind of get an idea of where I think these would stack up. First is going to be the Snapmaker Ray 40. This comes in at $1,700. It's 40 watts, which gives us a cost per watt of $43 per watt. If you guys aren't familiar, Snapmaker is the three-in-one manufacturer, meaning they have one machine that has a 3D printer, a laser, and a CNC. Usually I will say those three-in-one machines aren't the best, uh, but Snapmaker actually does a very, very nice job. Now the Ray 40 is basically if they took their normal Snapmaker design and they flipped it down, still using the same rails and kind of the same assembly and the same software. Then they throw a separate enclosure on top of the whole unit. So the enclosure and the machine isn't completely connected. And that's gonna be something we're gonna come back to several times when we talk about these machines. But the Ray 40, just like with everything else that Snapmaker makes, uh, is just very, very nice in terms of fit and finish. Uh, they have their own software, the Lubin software that has developed a lot over the years, but you still can use Lightburn, which is like the industry standard across all types of lasers, whether we're talking about diodes or the bigger CO2 units. So really the biggest con for me is just the fact that it's not fully connected into one unit and the company in general is still focused on that three in one design. So the Ray 40 feels a little bit like a kind of leftover parts, but we can make a new design with it. So it wasn't built from the ground up to be a laser cutter slash engraver, but it's still a good unit. So Snapmaker, I'm going to drop into the C tier, but it's like just on the border, probably could bump into the B. Next up is going to be Jinmitsu, the L8. Jinmitsu makes a bunch of these type of machines. They have definitely had several of the open gantry style designs in the past. In terms of price, theirs is real nice at 1300 bucks for 40 watts, which gives us a cost per watt of $33. So this comes in on the lower side in terms of price, which is a big positive for this machine. In general, this looks like a solid design. Kind of with these companies, we start to see pretty much the same type of machine. And this definitely happened on the open gantry style of things. So starting to see pretty much the same thing on the enclosure side. But one of the factors that will make these stand apart has to do with autofocus. And so the Jimitsu does not have autofocus and that's kind of the con with that machine. But in terms of the pro side, it's a really, really great value, uh, but the company just doesn't seem as big. So there just might not be as much support and community built around it. But their entire laser is built as one unit and I really like that. So you could just physically pick it up and put it somewhere else. So in terms of tiers, I'm gonna drop this a B. All right, it's actually started to rain, so it's gotten a lot darker and spookier in here, which is pretty appropriate for this video sponsor, and that is Aura. Now, if you're like pretty much everybody, you have more than likely Googled your name to see what would come up. In my case, it's like children's books that I used to sell on Amazon back in the day, but you can also see a lot of information you don't want public out there. So you've got all of these data brokers that are selling your information to spammers and hackers and lots of folks you probably don't want to have it. But that's actually why I'm using today's sponsor or Aura because they will list out all of the data brokers and then they'll submit requests on your behalf to have all that stuff deleted and they legally have to do it. And you can actually see right now a list of data brokers that are currently selling one of my emails. So Aura is actively reaching out to them and getting that taken off. And having all of that stuff cleaned up means I'm gonna be less likely to get spam as well as less likely to get hacked. Now Aura also does a bunch of other security related things like they give you a VPN service that allows you to browse securely. They've got a great password manager 
as well as antivirus service, some great security controls if you're a parent, and they even offer identity theft insurance. And they can even monitor financial transactions just to make sure there isn't like a fraud charge that is coming through. So if you want Aura out there protecting your private information, you can get a two week free trial at the link in the description or go to aura.com slash make a break. Okay, the last one that I don't have in my shop is the iKear K1 Pro Max, their 70 watt machine. And in the past, a lot of manufacturers would advertise the power going into the machine. So you'd see a lot of like 120 watt diode lasers for like $400. And you're like, how does that work? That's not possible. And it's because they were not telling the complete truth because they were giving you the power going in versus the power coming out. In those cases, that was more like 10 or 20 watts. But this is a true output power of 70 watts, which is insane. The max of the ones that actually have in my shop right now are 40 watts. And to get into anything over 40 watts, you're gonna be talking about a lot bigger machine on the CO2 side of things. So here, this actually wasn't supposed to be on camera, but we'll show you. That's a 60 watt unit right there. That Thunder is a 50 watt unit. And then that big boy that I have a lot of videos coming on soon, that is 150 watts. And just for comparison, it's really, so the fact that you can get 70 watts in a desktop diode machine is wild. So I'm gonna say that is a big pro. It also has a nice feature where inside the module itself, you can actually have two different power outputs. So I think that one is 70 watts and then 33 watt. And that's really nice for engraving because the higher you go up in power, thicker the laser dot and the less fine detail that you can get in. But if you still want to cut, you want all of that power possible. Now the price comes in at $2,300. So we are breaking that $2,000 mark. But this is more than double the power output outage of the other machines. So the price per watt is actually pretty good at 33 watts, so real similar to that Gen Mitsu. This also has autofocus and a camera built in, a feature that not all of these units might have. And really the biggest con that I can tell from this is this still is an open gantry design, meaning that it looks like the enclosure is totally separate and that just goes on top of the other unit. So the rails and everything isn't built into the frame itself. And if you just have it kind of sitting there all set up, that may not be a big knock for you, but I really do like these all in one designed units. So with all that being said, I'm gonna drop Ikea into the B tier, but I'm gonna put it ahead or to the left of the Jim Mitsu unit. All right, so now let's talk about the machines that I have behind me. And all four of these behind me, I've done full video reviews of. I'll include all of those down below. But starting on this side, this is the We Create Vision. You probably have seen a lot about this machine, not just from me, but from a lot of product reviewers in the laser 3D printer or CNC space. That is because they kind of came out of the gates launching really, really hard. I know a lot of people were doing paid videos for them. And actually the videos on my channel about the We Create Vision were all paid so those aren't full out reviews. Now with all that being said, I would say this is a good unit. The lifting mechanism is wild. The fact that this whole top will go up and down and that is how they autofocus. But a few things I don't like about it is it really doesn't have any type of pass through, meaning like an open slot that you can slide in materials, which is something the Lasermatic that's actually what this is right there, is the pass-through that you can open up so you can put in materials. And the work area is smaller than most of the other unit. And this one comes in at 420 by 290 millimeters, uh, where most of them are in the like 400 by 400 millimeter range. And as you're going through this, you're looking at the laser list that I have where I keep track of all of these stats. If you guys want to check that out yourself, I've got a link down below. But the biggest con about this machine is the fact that it is only 20 watts. That is the maximum wattage you can get. I think they also offer a 10 watt, uh, but 20 is as high up as you can can go. Um, the price is 1300 so it's not as expensive as the other units. But if we're talking price per watt, this gets nearly at the top end at $65. So that's basically double what we saw with IKEA and the Jimitsu. And they've also rolled their own software that is, is pretty good, especially if you are a beginner. Um, it does support Lightburn, but the Lightburn integration is a little bit wonky. You're basically like exporting G-code and importing it back into their software. So it's not the tightest, but I'll say because the wattage isn't as high, but your cost per watt is, this still is going to go to the B tier, but it's going to be below IKEA and the Jimitsu unit. All right, next up is this green guy right here, the X Tool. S1. Man, have we seen tons of advertisements for Xtool in the past. You might even get one during this video. You can tell they're spending a lot of money in marketing, uh, and that kind of reflects in the price of this machine. This is going to be one of the most expensive. So this is $2,400. This actually makes it the most expensive machine that we're talking about. Uh, it's 40 watts, which gives us a cost per watt of 60. So not as high as the We Create Vision, but still getting up there. So this is a pricey machine, but there are a lot of things 
that I like about it. First off, it doesn't have a conventional work bed like sizing, like we just talked about with the 400 by 400, um, but it still is big. So it is wider than it is tall, which gives us basically like a 500 by 320 millimeter. And I find when I'm doing most of my engraving, um, they are not like perfectly square. A lot of times it is that rectangle shape. So being able to go even wider is great. The fit and finish is nice. It isn't a metal enclosure, so that's kind of a con, but it is this hard plastic that does a good job. They probably have the nicest and nicest looking air assist unit. So their compressor that has a bunch of settings directly on this as well. So you got the auto going all the way up to max. They do fully support light burn and they also have their own software, the Xtool, I think Creative Space, which I believe they actually have a pretty big update coming out pretty soon. Um, this is the most full featured software uh, other than Lightburn, but it's also pretty beginner friendly. So I find myself when I am using the S1 uh, that a lot of the stuff that I need to get done, I can just do straight through their software. Now you can connect to it over Wi-Fi, but it's not Wi-Fi like the Glowforge where you have to be connected to the internet. So still stuff can run locally. And another pro is it does have autofocus. The lid doesn't lift up and down. It just does it from the laser head itself, which is pretty common on pretty much all the other machines. Now one negative with it that's kind of strange is the fact it has no camera. So you don't have the camera positioning and pretty much all of these other units have a camera integrated. Um, I will definitely say that's a drawback, but Xtool in general, I find have been doing a really, really good job developing their machines. Um, they have a pretty big community around it, meaning you're gonna find a lot of the people that have the machine. So you're gonna find lots of good support on Facebook with other users. They have a pretty good community in terms of files. Well, lots of folks are making designs that you can use yourself and they're just kind of constantly upgrading their modules. And usually those modules are gonna be interchangeable. So basically what they've told me is the Xtool D1 Pro, their open gantry designed machine. They're kind of phasing that out in favor for the Xtool S1. They actually just finished up like a trade-in program, I think. So that's kind of moving away. So I totally can see them developing different types of ledger modules and it's pretty easy to change them out. All that being said, and maybe I just have a soft spot to Xtool, um, but I'm gonna put them in the A tier. Uh, I just like this machine. It's a good one to use. All right, next up is the Raleigh Lasermatic Mark II. This orange guy right here. I don't have it turned on because kind of the fan on the back always runs, which is maybe the only con of this machine and the fan isn't super loud. This It's not a big deal. I really like this machine. Raleigh is new. This is basically their like fully enclosed design. And it's basically like an all-in-one machine. The frame is fully integrated. I love the fact that you can see pretty much 360 around the machine. So it's got that tinted polycarbonate on all four sides. So you really can see what you're doing with your materials. And it does have a camera. It's got pass-through. You can change the pressure on the machine itself for the amount of air assist that's going into it. I just really like this machine. Now the maximum they have is only 30 watts, um, but it comes in at a price at 1400, which gives us a cost per watt of 47. So that's cheaper in comparison to the WeCreate and the X tool, but not quite as cheap as the IKEA and the Jimitsu. Kind of the only negative that I've seen so far using this machine is it doesn't have autofocus, but it really is easy to adjust the focus on the machine itself. But just having the autofocus built in is a nice luxury to have. So where do I rank this on the tier rankings? Guys, I really like Raleigh. This is a Great machine. Um, I'm gonna go S tier. This is up until now my favorite machine that we've uh, we've talked about. Moving right along, this is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. Probably the most unique feature of this machine is the uh, top enclosure. This slides. And then what I like about this, and I haven't been able to show this even in the review, is this machine right now is fully open, so you can get in there, take stuff out. It's good to go. To do that with these machines you have to have a lot of space above the machine itself. So a lot of times I will run these on machines that have cabinets above them. Uh, and so that is kind of a pain uh, because especially with the WeCreate Vision when it's like raised all the way up. And then even with the Raleigh, because the lid is like one big piece that opens all the way up, still are coming up pretty high. I guess one benefit of the X tool not being all the way through 60 see through is the lid cover doesn't come up as high as well. Now I do kind of wonder how long that film will stay put. So I might have to replace that in the future. Uh, I can see it getting kinked or a uh, up a little bit. But overall, a really nice machine from Creality. In terms of wattage and price, so this is 40 watts at $1,900. So we're getting up at the top end. Uh, so the cost per watt is 48. Higher than Raleigh, but not as high as these two over here. If you get the 40 watt unit, you also get a smaller 1.6 watt unit. It's basically their way of giving you a way to do fine engravings. And it's really easy to swap those out. Another big benefit that pretty much none of these other have is a pull out tray. So this is common feature on CO2 machines. You're gonna have a tray 
spray that can come out. So all of like the dust and the debris and the stuff that's falling through the honeycomb or the slatted bed, you're able to take it out, dump it out really easy. The rest of them, you basically have to drop a vacuum inside of or pick it out yourself. This also is a metal frame like the Raleigh and I think even, yeah, the WeCreate is metal as well. So the X-Tool is the only one that is this hard plastic. It has some pretty cool safety features built directly into the laser module itself, where it has a few different lights that gives you indicators on if things are good to go. Even the fact it can sense if you have a dirty lens. And I don't think I've seen that pretty much on any other machine, even like some of the higher end CO2s. So in terms of tier, I'm gonna drop this guy an A. I really like this unit and Creality has been around a while, maybe not on the laser side, but definitely on the 3D printer side. So I can definitely see them coming out with higher wattage models in the future. But compared to the X-Tool S1, uh, I'm gonna do it just a hair under. Uh, I really like the design of this bed for the stuff that I work on, but that's still a great unit. And the last one is going to be the Glowforge Aura. This is a six watt unit uh, that you can currently get for around a thousand dollars. So the cost per watt is going to be 166. So like a hundred more than the WeCreate Vision. So insane in terms of the power of the module itself. Um, kind of the pros, and the cons of Glowforge are pretty much the same. The fact that it's a Glowforge, meaning it's a fully integrated system, software included, um, all of that is up in the cloud, which does give them the ability to like upgrade your unit because the brains don't live directly outside of it. But that also means everything is in the cloud. So a lot of people get worried, maybe they're just gonna brick the machine and turn off that connection some point in the future. And I kind of would say, especially with the Aura versus even like the Glowforge Pro, they're probably going after a little bit different in terms of demographic than what these guys are. I would say if you're coming more from the woodworking side of things, these are gonna be more in line with the stuff that you like. Versus the Aura, I can see definitely catered to the crafting space to where you actually don't need the power as high because you're working with a lot of paper goods and textiles, which even a six watt diode will do a good job. But of all of these machines, their software is the easiest to use if you've never done anything like this before. And their safety has always been top notch from the jump and it's a really nice build quality as well. But for me personally, for my rankings and my tier list, that cost per watt is pretty hard. So I'm gonna put the Aura on the C tier. But again, that's for me. If you are on the crafting side, it really could still be a good fit for you. Okay, so we didn't have anything on the F tier, but there is one machine I'm gonna put way down there. And that is this guy, the super popular X-Tool D1. Pro. And it's not this machine itself. This is still a great machine. It does an incredible job. It's the fact that this is open air. There is no enclosure. So it really feels like we're moving out of buying machines like this and still having to do a lot to it on the safety side of things, especially if you're gonna run this around anybody but you, to more professional style units that are good to go right out of the box, but ones that can still fit on a desktop. All right, here's the playlist where we go in depth on all four of those machines, and I'll see you on the other side. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.